Are you a mom? Do you have a younger daughter? You need more protein than your daughter. Why is protein the menopause nutrient? Well, one, as we age, we need more protein. Two, optimal protein diets address all of the negative body composition changes that occur when women go through menopause. And three, we know that women, particularly midlife women, don't consume enough protein. Before I go into details on these three things, I wanna take a moment to thank Hone Health for making this educational series possible. All right, let's break down the three factors of why protein is the menopause nutrient. The older we get, the more protein we need. So let me explain this. When we're premenopausal and we consume protein, more of that protein goes to our muscles. Now, when we eat protein, not all of it goes to our muscles. Other tissues in our body need the protein as well. Like our brain needs some protein, our digestive system keeps some of the protein. But what we do know is that aging induces something called anabolic resistance and part of that is becoming less efficient with how we process protein. Let me give an example. Let's say that you are premenopausal, you're in your 30s, and you eat 25 grams of protein. Out of those 25 grams, five grams will make it to your muscles so that you can actually build muscle mass. Now that's 20% of the protein when you're younger that makes it to your muscles. Now let's go to your mid 50s or 60s and now you're postmenopausal. You eat 25 grams of protein, but instead of five grams being made available to your muscles, now only four grams is able to go to your muscles. That's only 15% rather than 20%. So how do we fix this? We just need to consume more protein when we're older to offset this anabolic resistance. The second reason why I'm declaring protein as the menopause nutrient is because it can help reverse the negative body composition changes that happen during the menopause transition. Now in one of the earlier episodes, and this is a good place for me to remind you, if you haven't watched the earlier episodes, go back and watch them. They provide a lot of context to what we're saying now. And this was designed as a series of educational lectures that build on each other. But what we learned in one of our earlier episodes was that as a woman enters the menopause transition, two things happen. For the first time in her life, she starts to lose lean muscle mass. The other thing that happens is that she's starting to gain body fat at an accelerated rate much more so than she was ever gaining in her younger years. And the third reason is because women, particularly middle-aged women, do not get enough protein. Research has reported that on average, women will only eat about 70 grams of protein per day. And that is not enough. In fact, that's about half of the upper range that I recommend. In the next episode, I'm going to give you compelling research of how optimal protein intake will improve body composition in premenopausal, perimenopausal, and postmenopausal women. And let me give you one more fun fact about protein. Did you know that protein is unique or has a unique role compared to the other macronutrients? We have three different macronutrients that our body uses. We have carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Now carbohydrates and fat are the energy nutrients. Let me explain what I mean. When we eat carbs, they're the best nutrient to fuel your high intensity workouts. So if you're lifting weights or sprinting, running fast, doing explosive training, carbs fuel that type of activity. Fat is the best type of fuel for fueling our low intensity workouts. Walking, low intensity running, that's what fat is used for. Now protein really isn't providing our body with energy. Our body does not like to use protein to fuel workouts. Instead, protein is an adaptive nutrient. And this is fascinating. You do your workouts 
to create a stimulus on your body that you want to adapt to. And protein allows you to adapt to that stimulus. So we want to look at food in this sense. Carbs and fats fuel our workouts, which provide a stimulus for change. Protein is the nutrient that allows our body to adapt to the training stimulus. Would like to thank Hone Health for making this series possible. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that now. Also, was there anything that you learned or that was new to you in this episode? Comment below about things that you learned or things that you would like to learn more about with respect to protein. In the next episode, I'm going to give you very compelling evidence. You know me, I'm bringing the receipts. So compelling evidence that protein or optimizing protein will change your body composition for the better.